Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about how to incorporate a view model into your reality view. So I'm gonna make another Swift UI view and well, another reality view. I'm gonna name it, um, since the last one was local asset reality view, I'm gonna name this remote asset reality view. And then create. And of course we will have to import reality kit. And from here, we will be initializing our view model as well as the view itself. And then we'll write a fetch function for the view model and we will utilize that fetch function to download model entity from the server. So the first thing we want to do is to make our view model. And instead of observable object protocol, we will be utilizing this add observable macro. And then we're going to name it remote asset reality view model. And then from here, we're, uh, we're going to make another um, enum called fetch request or fetch result. And this will tell us uh, what kind of fetch result we're going to be getting uh, if we're making a like an API request. And so like uh, it can be either loading, failure and success, right? And then we're gonna get the case for those. Case, lo case loading. And then in the success case, we'll be getting a USDZ model uh, um, and that's gonna be a type of model entity. Like so. And in our view model, we'll be utilizing this enum bar fetch result. And this will be type of of course uh, fetch result, and we're gonna be util uh, we're gonna be initializing this as a loading state. And after that, uh, we'll be writing a fetch function. I'm gonna say uh, fetch uh, asset maybe, and then we're we're going to mark this as async. Now there is a little bit of an issue here. Unlike model 3D, um, we can't actually get a remote result of something, remote result of, uh, of a data and magically cook up this like a model entity because let's see, uh, let la la la, and it's a type of model, model entity. As we can see, we can either get it from something we already have this named in or something like that and we can just either create it from the get-go give, uh, giving it a uh, like a mesh or we can get it from this content of url but as you can see it has to be from a file url what this means is that swift is okay with getting a locally stored model entity usdz but does not give you any native way to fetch the data from remote url so what we are going to do before writing this fetch function is that we're going to write an extension for model entity that takes in remote URL. So we can use that to fetch raw data from the server and cook up a model entity object from it. And this is going to be an async throws convenience in it. So if some kind of error happens, we can just catch it in the uh, fetch asset call and update our fetch result variable accordingly. And this is where we will asynchronously download the raw data using URL session. After we get some live data from this URL session, we're going to store that inside our file container and then we're going to digest right off of it. And let's say that file URL and then we're giving it uh, an as temporary directory because we're not gonna store these assets forever and we will append a new UID to it so in case of multiple async call all happening at once nothing would override each other
And finally, we will give it a file extension so RealityKit would know what to make of it. And since this will be a USDZ file from the server, I'll give it a USDZ file extension. Or if it is like a reality file, you want to give it a, you know, reality extension. And then we're going to use file manager to create a file with the data we got from the URL session call above. So what we did was to basically make a file URL after getting this live data and then have the file manager to create some kind of file with the uh, extension of USDZ. And now we can utilize this data right here to create this model entity from the file we just downloaded. Now that we took care of our model entity not being able to get the data from, well, remote URL, we can go back to a writing fetch asset function. First, we're going to create a URL for this. For let URL equals URL string, then, and then get this uh, string URL from here. And let's handle let's handle our error case as well, and see if we uh, for some reason we can't make this URL. We're gonna say self dot fetch result calls fail. And after this, we can just simply say let model entity equals model entity remote URL, and let's give it this URL. And since this will be uh, async throw, we need to put this in a try catch block or do catch block. And then for some reason there's error uh, that's getting thrown from this call, then we can just catch it from here. And since we're not gonna do anything specific depending on the error, we can just say fetch result equals fail. And let's say we have some kind of a live entity right here. And then we're going to set our fetch result to success. Success model entity right here. And now we can go back to our view. Instead of giving this text, we can just replace that with a reality view. Reality view with updates. And we're not gonna utilize this make block today because make block only gets called once when the view initializes. And on that point, it will look for the model entity data, whether it's within the view or inside the view model. The thing is that we're not giving it any kind of um, model entity upon the initialization of our view. And by the time this make block gets called, view model's fetch result would still be in loading state because we haven't called fetch asset function yet. An update block, uh, update block gets called whenever there's a state change inside the view, AKA when the view model changes or some kind of at state variable inside the view get changed. And inside the update block, we're writing for the case whenever these gets updated. But before we do that, we have to make our view model. And now that we have our view model, we need to fetch it, right? Then we're going to give it a task block here to give it a view model dot fetch, uh, not fetch result, fetch asset. And then we're going to await on this. The difference between uh, task and on appear is that, well, on appear doesn't really support asynchronous block out of the block as you can see right here on appear perform and if you want to do um await view model dot fetch asset it's going to give us uh give us a uh, error because it does not support a uh, synchronous function here but uh, on that task it supports the asynchronous operation right out of the block so we're going to be utilizing this instead of on appear Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. 
So now our view has been loaded and as soon as it loaded, it will call upon fetch, as fetch asset on our view model. And then we have to take a look at what's inside this fetch result to display whatever we got in here, right? And for now, we're not gonna worry about loading state or failure state. And now we need to, well, display this remote as a reality view in our vi uh, Vision Pro, right? And we've done this before and I explained how it works in my previous video. So I think I'm gonna skip on some verbose explanation on how to do this and how it works behind the scene. And then we can just link up a button to display this. And now this is getting a little bit cluttered, so, uh, so I think I'm going to just get rid of a whole lot of these. And then let's give it a run. And as you can see, we got a teapot. And you might ask, that's it? And the answer is yes, um, that's it. That was it. That was the whole point of the video today, fetching remote asset. And before we finish up the video, let's do a quick recap. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure like, you know, like what these, uh, what these are doing. So I'm just going to skip on this. Uh, what I want to focus on today is this extension right here. And like I told you, a uh, model entity doesn't really give you any ways of fetching some kind of uh, remote asset and then digest it directly into their model entity. We have to, uh, we had to create this convenience in it method to be able to um, to be able to display this model entity properly in our reality view. And now we are utilizing our uh, custom fetch result to. Uh, to deal with like a success, fail, and loading case as well. Oh, it's uh, actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good practice to set the cell, uh, set the uh, fetch result here as loading as well. So consider the case where this is this try away call kind of hangs because you're downloading a very big file. And that's the second or like a third time and you're calling this function. At that point, your fetch result would still be at either fail or success case. And the user would not understand if it's loading or what's going on behind the scene. So it is always a good idea to reset your fetch result whenever you're calling fetch asset function or something like that. Okay, and after that, we are not utilizing this make block anymore because, um, like I told you, make block only gets called once when you initialize this view, and it will try to look for some kind of uh, model entity from uh, from within the view or some kind of like a view model that are pre-existing to th at the point of the initialization of the view. And since we want to start fetching as soon as possible. Uh, we're, uh, we're utilizing this dot task block to call fetch as said, like uh, as soon as the view appears. And the reason we're using uh, this dot task is that because the task supports asynchronous operation right out of the box, whereas dot on appear does not. There are a few more things that I want to discuss today, but I think I want to cut it here. I want to discuss how we can move around the object and how we can fetch multiple assets from the server um, efficiently. But I think it'll be better if I make separate videos instead of uh, cramming into one. I will also upload this code to GitHub, and you can uh, you can find the link in the description. And I'll also link the extension for model entity just as well. Okay, I will see you in my next video, and thanks for watching.